Okay, so this is projectile motion example number two. This is firing a cannon from the floor along level ground at an angle. So we are given the angle that it's being fired at and we're, giving them, we're given the muscle velocity of the, um, of the projectile. We again are trying to find uh, the horizontal distance that it's going to travel. So I'm going to again call that SX. Now the overriding equation that we want for this is still SX is equal to Vx times by Tf. So a distance is a speed times a time again. It's just a little bit more complicated to find out each of those variables this time. Uh, so what we need to do first of all is find out what Vx is. So because I've got a, uh, a size and I've got an angle, I can resolve the, uh, the vector through the angle to the horizontal and that way I can find Vx. The way I do that is because you go through the angle, so I know that Vx is equal to 2, 2, 5, cos 35 meters per second. Okay, so remember that is just a number. I can carry that around in my um, in my equation when I when I fill it in. I'm not going to do anything with this right now. I'm just going to leave that as it is and then put it in later. So I don't actually have to know that number. I just want to know how to find it, and I can put it all into my calculator at the end. Uh, to find TF, again, this one's a little more complicated this time. What I've got to do is, again, exploit some of those convenient points in projectile motion. So, uh, I know that at this point here, it's halfway, there are some convenient things that I can use to help me to solve this problem. So, I'm going to call that T subscript H for like T maximum height. And I know that TF is equal to 2TH. So the time that it takes to get to maximum height is half of the total flight time. And the reason that I know that, remember we, we talked about um, gravity being a speed eating monster. So it chomps off effectively 10 meters per second uh, on the way up and then gives it back at 10 meters per second on the way down. Uh, that means that halfway uh, the V, so the, the final velocity here will be zero. And I can start to write down some SUVA equations. So I can say that S, U, V, A and T. Now I want to find TH. Right, so I want that one. Now I don't know how high it's going to go. I know that U, though, the beginning velocity, I know that that is V sine 35. Okay, from the idea that up here, if I resolve away from the angle, it's a sin to go through the angle, so I know that that there is V sine 35. I've resolved away from the angle, not through it, so I use sine to get that value. I know the convenient value of V, uh, which equals zero meters per second, and I always know A, because I always have A, even though I'm not given it, it's little g. So I am going to use uh, my SUVAT equation, and what I'm going to use is V equals U plus AT. I'm going to rearrange that for time. So I'm going to say V minus U equals AT. And therefore, V minus U over A equals T. Now that is going to be TH. That's time from the velocity V sine 35 at the beginning, zero to 
the velocity at time th, which is zero meters per second. So that's that one. I'm then going to rewrite this out. That's uh, th equals zero minus v sine 35 all over little g. And that means that I now know tf because all I've got to do is multiply this by two. Um, now, I'm going to do something that's not exactly mathematically um, correct here, but I'm just going to get rid of this negative sign because I'm going to assume that I'm cancelling it with the negative sign that's in G. G always points downwards, uh, it's an acceleration downwards. So I'm going to write, um, like I say, it's a bit mathematically sort of naughty and not exactly correct, but it gives us that th uh, is equal to 2v sine sorry that's tf, the total flight time is 2v sine 35 all over g and like I say I'm just I'm effectively taking the negative sign out of this because I know I'm not going to get a negative time um, I can then multiply this by vx so coming back to we're working in a, a different way now we're working in trying to find sx which equals vx tf so I'm just going to start writing what I know down now. So Vx is 225 cos 35. Now I'm going to multiply that by uh, 2 V being uh, 225 sine 35. And that's all over G. What, I'm, what I can effectively do here is notice that I've got V cos 35 and V sine 35. So I can rewrite that as 2 V squared cos 35 sine 35. And that's all over little g. Like that. And now I've got something that I can put into my calculator because I know the value of V. V is 225. So I'm going to get my calculator back out. And I'm just going to plug this thing in. So I'm going to push the fraction button first of all because this is a fraction, this is the best way to do it. I'm going to say 2 times by 225 squared. So that's V squared. And then I'm going to say cos 35, close the bracket, times by sine 35. Close the bracket and put that all over little g. Now that's come out to 4.9 kilometers which equals 4.9 times 10 to the 3 meters and that is to again to sig fig. So I can double underline my answer there now, just having a think about this, um, does that sound about right? Okay, so I can have a quick check. I had a um, I had this for uh, for TF, so I can do quick check on that. Two times two two five sine thirty five all over little g. It's going to equal twenty six seconds. Now. This is doing roughly 225 meters per second over, over that kind of time. That looks about right. That looks um, a good distance, a good answer. So it's not completely off. It's not in centimeters and it's not in millions of, of kilometers. So that's good. The other thing that we can do, again, if we mark off uh, where Vx is all the way, work this one out to about 186 kilometers uh, sorry, meters per second. So if I use that one, I mark out that, it's like about 180. Again, horizontal velocity is the same all of the way until TF, where it crashes into the ground and pretty much stops immediately. Now, um, V, 
Y it's going to be slightly different. It's going to start out this time with some amount of VY. Now it's going to be less um, when you put it in the calculator than it was. And exactly halfway at TH, where it's at the maximum height, I know that it's going to have a zero vertical velocity. So that is going to look like that. I'm talking about magnitudes of velocity here, by the way, on, on this one. And I know that it's going to have that exact same velocity on the way back. So once it lands at TF, and then going to draw it as going straight down like that, back to zero at TF. And that is VY.